Hi, my name's Danny. Welcome to Life in a Lab Coat. I want this video blog to give you guys a sense of what it's actually like to work in a lab and to do a PhD and how things actually progress. It's not like, I'm preparing one thing, I have cured cancer, look at me. Unfortunately, it's, oh crap, I just used the wrong media. Oh crap, I used the wrong sounds. Oh crap, this didn't work and I don't even know why. That's usually what science is like. So I'm gonna tell you a bit about my project and throughout the course of all these videos, hopefully you'll learn more about it and you can see what it's like actually working in a lab. I'm a PhD student at the University of Edinburgh and I'm doing research. So that means I spend most of my time either at my desk looking at papers or in the lab trying to get things to work. The field that I'm working in is neuroendocrinology. So basically neuro, brain, endocrinology is study of hormones. So I'm looking at hormones and the brain. My project specifically has a really long stupid title, which I'm not going to tell you, but I'm going to tell you about the project. So my project looks at prenatal stress and the gut microbiome. What does that mean? If you're exposed to stress in the womb, so while you're a fetus, if your mum is stressed out, we're not talking about like, oh my god, I have so many deadlines, more like natural disaster, domestic abuse, death in the family, that kind of like intense stress. You as the offspring will have a number of negative outcomes. So we know that these two are definitely related. Um, this has been studied in humans and in animals. And most notably, there's lots of epidemiological studies that look at the outcomes of pregnant women and their kids during things like 9-11 or Hurricane Katrina. There's a really solid basis that we know that this happens. The problem is we don't exactly know how this happens. So basically, the negative outcomes that we're talking about here are affective mood disorders. So that can be anxiety and depression, and that's basically what I'm focusing on. There's also links to schizophrenia, but that's outside of the scope of what I'm studying. Just to let you know, I'm working in rats, so if I'm talking about rats, that's why. So we have a pregnant rat, and she gets stressed during pregnancy, and then she has her offspring, and the offspring grow up, and when they grow up, they are more prone to depression and anxiety, just like with humans. But we don't really know how that stress translates to these mood affective disorders. The second aspect is the gut microbiome. And I'm sure that you've heard about the gut microbiome. It's pretty much everywhere. And if you turn on the TV, you can get yogurts and vitamin supplements that are probiotic and help you live your best life and smile and laugh while eating yogurt. We know that our gut contains a ton of bacteria. There are more bacteria than human cells in our bodies. So the bacteria are pretty good, we need them. We have a kind of symbiotic relationship. The problem is that we need the right balance of the types of bacteria in our guts. Here is a really good video by Kutzkazakt in a nutshell that discusses the microbiome. So if our gut bacteria are in imbalance and we have more of one type of bacteria than the other, then that can also lead to things like depression and anxiety, as well as also other things like Alzheimer's disease and diabetes and just you name it. So how does the gut link to being stressed? We have bi-directional communication. So that means our brains talk to our guts and our guts talk to our brains. Unfortunately, we don't really know what comes first, but we know that if you have anxiety, you will have altered gut microbiota. And if you have altered gut microbiota, you will have anxiety or depression. So we know that the two are linked. We also know stressed mums pass on the altered gut microbiota to the offspring. That seems like a really interesting link to look at. With stress comes altered gut microbiota, and that altered microbiota is also feeding the stress. That's the mum. This is passed on to the offspring. The offspring have already altered gut microbiota because they got it from their mum. So they grow up with altered gut microbiota, which means that they're probably, and we know that they're susceptible to anxiety and depression, and this might be why. So I'm looking at exactly how this might happen, how the altered gut microbiota might affect the brain in later life. Um, so I'm still focusing on neural pathways and brain activity and cellular mechanisms of how this might be happening. So that's my PhD basically in 
a few minutes and I will tell you more about it because there's really exciting stuff to learn all about HPA axes and GABA A receptors and other big words that will mean nothing to you. I hope you stick around and enjoy.